Welcome back to part two of this week's double feature hook of the week. If you haven't watched the first part, that's okay. These hooks are completely different. Doesn't matter what order you watch them in, but there are two hook of the week videos this week published at the same time, I think. So after you're done watching this video, go back and check the previous video and you can see how we made this hook. But for the second feature of our hook of the week, I'm going to look at a hook that one of the viewers sent, a fairly simple rail spike hook, but it's an idea that I've never thought of. I think it goes this way. And this was sent by Joe. Joe, thank you very much for sending the hook for us to look at. It says, been working on learning to forge, thanks in large part to your channel. Thought I'd send you one of my hooks after all the hooks you shared with your viewers. I've tried completing the scroll more, <clears throat> I've tried completing the scroll more fully, but hats and coats keep getting trapped on the scroll, so I just go with the loop. A couple of plain black drywall screws work pretty well to match the hook. Anyway, I hope you have space for yet another hook, and I appreciate all your efforts. By the way, if you review it in one of your episodes, I appreciate all the feedback, negative and positive. positive. So I have very little negative feedback for this hook, but I will point out some of the things that I might change just a little bit. And to be honest, one of those is the comment about black drywall screws. They are black. They do match the ironwork pretty well, but I just don't like drywall screws. They look like drywall screws. I much prefer to treat slotted flat or round head wood screws. I think they look much better with hand forged hooks than drywall screws do. But that would be the absolute most minor little criticism. It's really a kind of a personal preference and you don't have to have the same personal preference I do. So here's the hook Joe sent. Like I say, I think it goes this way, just so this is more of a hook, and certainly things would fall off of it this way, so it's gotta go this way. But you can see the, the round head screw, I just kinda like that a little bit better. Doesn't really matter, you can do them however you wanna do them. And this is real simple, it's been fullered in here for the spike to bend up and been fullered here. This is drawn out and rolled up. And my only other critique where he's just forging a loop, and I understand his reasoning for that and not doing something else. I think I would try to round this little section right here up a little bit more. And we'll take a look at that when we get over to the anvil. He also has a very nice new hook. This is a, a head that has not been pounded in before. It looks like it's still pretty pristine there, new from the factory. I got an old rusty beat up hook, so that's the one we're gonna use. First thing I want to do is straighten this out, just make it a little bit easier to work with. And very lightly hammer it to kind of work some of the roughness from the rust in. It's going to make the spike a little bit smaller, but should make it a little bit smoother and a little bit less rusty looking. And I want to bring this up here just to kind of get an idea of where my fuller line should go. When I do that, I kind of look at the scale pattern on the piece and say, oh, this piece of scale right there is right where I want this to, to set down. And I'm just using a 3 8 round bar. That starts that. And I'll come down here and Mark the second one. Then we'll get that hot and do a better job of making those fullers. Now you'll notice the back of the spike has that head sticks back, so I'm putting that down in the hardy hole. Although as I do this, it's curling up, so it's not gonna be a big deal for long. I'm just going to drive this in until my 3 8 bar is pretty much flush with the top, although it's flattening as I do this. Certainly a hardened and tempered tool will last longer. But for one spike, this will be plenty of 3 8 round bar to do this with. You can see that this is kind of pooching out at the edges here. At least I hope you can see that. That kind of pooches out and I like that effect. I think that just gives it some more interest so I'm not going to work that back in. 
If you want it parallel, you need to work it in or file it off. Now Joe's original hook just has the holes drilled and I think that works out just fine. But just to be a little bit different, I think I'm going to use a ball punch to create a depression and that'll add a little bit of a matching pooch out. Swell would probably be more technically correct. Pooch is a technical blacksmithing term. That gives a good place for the head of the screw to recess into. I was going to punch it. Yeah, maybe we'll still go ahead and punch that. At this point, drilling it wouldn't be a bad option, but punching is still a, a way to go. You don't want too big of a hole punched in these. I don't think it calls for a great big screw. There's the little slug right there. Unfortunately, deformed my earlier depression. So I may still need to run a drill bit through there just to clean all that up. But for the most part, that's done. The next step then is to draw out this part. I'm going to work this fuller kind of at an angle here just to guarantee that transition doesn't create a cold shut. It'd be real easy for that to kind of flop over there and cause a problem. You can also do it this way. That should help prevent any kind of a cold shut from forming. Now it's just a matter of drawing that out and I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to leave that little bulge right there but I want it parallel beyond that and all the way out to the end. By using the cross peen we can draw this out a lot faster. Do it over the horn of the anvil. Pretty much anything that squeezes the material in just two directions lengthwise makes drawing out faster. You could use the corner of your hammer if it's round enough. Some people even like to work kind of over the edge this way and use that as a fuller. But you've got to have a pretty round edge of your anvil to do that. I think Joe's spike might have been bigger than this one. Maybe just a bigger cross-section, but in any case his has got a lot more material here than what I'm ending up with.
Now his hook is drawn out quite thin, so I'm trying to get this a nice thin piece of material here. I can see why he didn't leave the little fuller bulge there. That's kind of hard to maintain. Okay, so that's the part that will become the hook, or the big hook. Now it looks to me like this end may have been bent on a jig similar to this. It's about the same size anyways. And one of the problems with doing that is you have to have a little flat sticking out. So when you roll this around, that, that indexes. And when you roll it all the way around, then you end up with that flat kind of like that by the time you tuck that in. But if you stop short like this, you can tuck that in there. And then perhaps grab it with a pair of pliers and you roll that all the way around. And you end up with a nice round end that isn't flat on one side like that one is. Just an idea, don't have to do it that way, just like I say, this is just my personal preference. But I don't have enough material here to get this long of a hook and still have that big of an end. So I'm going to straighten that back out, do it a little bit smaller, and then I'll have enough to get a decent hook on there. I think this is an excellent place just to develop your skills rolling this at the edge of the anvil. If you're doing production work, you may want to do something else. But you can get very good at rolling that round if you just practice. So now we'll bring this up and make that hook out of it. It still won't be quite the same as the one he's got here, just because I don't have that much material, but it'll be very similar. And this is still a place we could use this simple little bending jig, I think. I think you really need a, a spike with a lot more material to get it to look as graceful as his did there. This one's a little bit on the short side. One of the problems with working with somebody else's idea is sometimes it's a little hard to see just what you're after because you didn't see it in your head in the first place. You've got to crawl in somebody else's head sometimes. I definitely like how graceful his was because he had so much more material out there than this. Okay, that's a little bit better. Put that in the vise. And so I don't mess up the back of the head, I'm just going to drive that forward with a rawhide mallet. The only problem with this is that that head will then block that bottom screw hole 
but with an angled screwdriver you can make that work. You can also drop that down some and it'll probably work as a hook as well, but I kind of like the hook more at a 90 degree angle there. This one still, still doesn't quite look right to me. It's a little better. Like so many things, if you're going to do a batch of these, you'd kind of get this all figured out. You'd know just what you wanted. And they'd start to look pretty regular after a little while. Well, here's my completed version of Joe's hook. To be honest, I really like Joe's proportions better. The top section looks much better on this hook than the short one I have. But my center section and my head section are pretty much the same as his. I think his spike was a little bit heavier and thicker, partially because it was new, but partially because new spikes may just be heavier than the old spikes were. And that gave him more material to draw out here. May have also been a longer spike to start with, it's hard to say. But I think if I were to do it again, I would shorten up both of the other two sections just to get another half, three quarter, maybe even one inch of length to draw out into that hook. I think it would be a more graceful hook that way. And as I mentioned, I will use slotted roundhead wood screws in there. I think they look really good in the, the holes there. Those are about the right size screws. I did not have to go through and redrill that. It all worked out just fine. And you can do this with an offset screwdriver or one with a little cable so it can bend around there. But you'll notice in Joe's hook, he just left this down a little bit. So there's actually room to get a screwdriver through here this way. So that's an option for you, depending on what you want to do. Always more than one approach to these kind of things. You don't have to make exact copies of something else you've seen. Be inspired by it. Take it a little bit different direction. If you thought, well, I would have done that different. Try it. Do it a little bit different. See what you think. You might find out that you actually like the first one a little bit better than you like yours. You might find out you like your idea better. You might end up deciding that something in between is better. And that, after all, is the main purpose of the Hook of the Week videos. It's to encourage you to use your imagination, to use small bits of material that don't cost very much, you don't have a big investment in it, and just see what works, see what you like. Don't like the one you did today? Take it a different direction tomorrow, do something a little bit different. You might end up with something you really like by the time you're all done, and you might end up with a hook so unique that nobody else has ever thought of it before. So thank you, Joe, for sending that hook out. That was a fun little project. I'm glad we got to try it out. For the rest of you, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos. Wait till the very end of this video, and there will be a link to the first video for our Hook of the Week double feature. If you haven't already seen this, you can go back and watch it. Completely unrelated to this one, just happened to do them both on the same day. But in the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and as always, we'll see you for the next one.